Hello. Um, this is Fluttershy, and uh, join us me to um, give the intro to the rule of this reading. This is um, Bob Questrina, Chapter One. Um, here is your reader, Rin. Thanks, Fluttershy. You're welcome. Ah, Fluttershy, so adorable. Glad she, he hasn't killed me with cuteness yet. No, I'm, I'm not going to die, Fluttershy, don't worry. Anyway, on with the reading. Chapter 1. Out of the Stable. Because, because in Stable 2, no pony ever enters, and no pony ever leaves. Gray. The walls of my ma of the maintenance stalls were very monot were, ve were all very monotonous, dull gray. The particular wall I was staring at had the merit of being a very clean gray. Pip bucks were notoriously hardy and reliable, so being the stable's pip buck technician meant that there was long periods of nothing to do. Being the pip buck technician's apprentice meant that I was assigned uh, all the mundane daily chores while my trainer took extended naps in the back room. Chores like cleaning the walls. This wall needs a mural. I let myself fantasize, picturing the Obermeyer Evergreen and ordering Pilot herself to turn our entire stall into one of her brightly colorful masterpieces. Pilot was the greatest painter in Staple 2, and like every skilled artist, that made her a stable treasure. Life in Stable 2 inevitably began to eat at your spirit. You were born in the stable, you lived your whole life in the stable, you were going to die there. And of course your life was laid out for you, the, you to see by your cutie mark party. Uh, okay, oh, lost my place there. So the Obermeyer insisted that a new song be added to the stable's broadcast repertoire each week. That public areas were brightly painted and adored with uplifting motivational murals that regular parties were planned in the atrium, all in the effort to distract and starve off or stave off depression. Reality, reality came crashing back when I stared at the empty blank gray. Beautifying maintenance areas was tragically low priority already and the pit buck technician install was one of the least traffic parts of maintenance. I felt my ears drop as I started to realize I'd be staring at the same gray wall nearly every day for the rest of my life. Oh dear, was it really that bad? And there she was. Velvet Remedy. The gorgeous charcoal-coated unicorn with streaks of color in her white mane with a voice as smooth as silk and rich as finest chocolate was standing in the doorway to, in my, of my stall. I felt immediately grateful that I had finished cleaning and simultaneously ashamed that the room was so beneath her. I couldn't believe she was standing right there. I would seen her on stage above us at late parties. I had listened to her songs incessantly recording every new one on my pip bucket. So, bleh, pip buck, I said it again. So that I did and have to wait to hear it again. I admit it now. I had a crush on Velvet Remedy for years. Me and at least 300 other ponies. My mother used to laugh at that. Little Pip, she would say, chortling with her friends. Velvet Remedy's barn door doesn't swing that way. It took me a couple of years to understand what my mother meant by that. It took me several seconds to process that, Vel that Velvet Remedy had just asked me something. What? What? Huh? Wonderful response, little Pip. So elegant. I wanted to dig my way to the concrete floor and pull the chunks over top of me. She smiled sweetly. She smiled at me, and that amazing, and in that amazing voice, you look so heartbroken when I came in. Is there anything I can do? The remedy offered to help me. I was shocked back to my senses. Well, Rarity must have some reason to be down here. There's some pit buck reason. It wasn't like, like she it would just go wandering around maintenance, after all. Looking around, I realized it was the only pony on duty. 
My teacher was, as usual, asleep in his office. Uh, oh, oh no, it was nothing. I tried to regain my composure. Uh, how may I be of assistance? Well, Remedy's expression was both compassionate and unconvinced. She lifted a forehoof, raising her pip buck to my gaze. A more elegant model than mine, her initials and cutie mark. A beautiful bird with wings outstretched and beak open in song, embellished it tastefully. I'd hate to be a bother, but it's begun to chafe. Could you replace the padding? Oh, absolutely, I said, levitating in a special key used to unlock a pip buck from a pony's foreleg. As an apprentice pip buck technician, I had at all manner of special precision tools in the pocket of my utility parting. I'll have it done right quick. The pip buck came off with a click. Hey, yeah, that rhymed. Velvet Remedy chuckled hesitantly, lowering her hoof. Oh, oh, oh no, that's all right. Take your time. I'm going to put some su salve on this leg in back of my room and rest up for the afternoon. That's right. Velvet Remedy was performing at Stable to Saloon tomorrow night. I have to polish it up, make it worthy of being worn above her hoof. If I spent all night on it, I could give it a fine tune-up, have it running as smoothly as the day she got it, and still put back in time before the show. All, all right, I'll have it back to you, you by this time tomorrow. You won't be disappointed, I promise. She smiled again, and the gray in the world couldn't darken my day. Thank you. And she, then she turned to go. I watched her cutie mark disappear on the doorway. And, there, and she was gone. Hey, I was whistling one of Velvet Remedy's songs as I walked down the halls towards her room. Her pip buck was hovering along on beside me in a field of magical levitation. Fever, freshly padded with the best lining I could find, looking shiny and new. I, tr I was tired from a long night of, night of work. All night or work. There's a typo. I found a typo in the story. Wow. Rather... Anyway, I was tired from a long night or work, of work, but in high spirits, Velvet Remedy was going to be so happy with my work. Turning the corner, I was startled, not out of my every, by the massive ponies gathering outside Velvet Remedy's room. Damn, I was going to have to battle my way through the hoof print seekers and paparazzi. Levitating the pit buck higher, I started to shove my way through the crowd. She's gone. How could she leave? Wait, no, wait, no. Nah. She's gone. How could she leave? Hushed voices and panic whines grew around me grew alarming. Why would she abandon us? Gone? But what remedy was? Gone? And then the words that stopped me cold. I don't think the stable door could even open. Or I didn't think the stable door could even open. She was gone. Outside? Don't worry, every pony, boomed the voice of the Obermare from somewhere in the crowd. I have the tag of each pony, each and every pony in the stable. I will personally send out a rescue party. We will have our velvet back by the end of the day. Worry not. I felt I was drowning in cold, wet cement. My gaze slowly moved upward towards the pit buck floating above me. Slowly moved towards the pit buck floating above me. I lowered my head, slowly trying to back out of the crowd, curling the floating pit buck close. When the Overmare brought up the Velvet Remedy's tags, it would lead every pony to, not to Velvet, but her pit buck, sitting in maintenance. With a thump, I backed into some pony, startled me and startling me enough that the levitation field evaporated and poof, clean, shiny pit, the clean, poof, and the clean and shiny pit buck clattered to the floor. Turning, I found myself eye to eye with the Overmare. She didn't speak. Her gaze turned to the pit buck on the ground. Both remedies and initials and cutie mark clearly visible. What is this? The Overmare spoke slowly, dangerously. All eyes turned to me. I could feel every pair of eyes. Nobody spoke. The silence bore down on me like a lead blanket. My mouth would try. I couldn't find my voice. I didn't need to. I could feel the wave of loathing. Dozens of Velvet Remedy fan ponies, and I was the pony holding the reason why their idol was lost to them. The over Emerge voice was surprisingly gentle. Take it to your room, swiftly. She didn't need to tell me twice.